With money, there's a simple formula. You've got to earn more than you spend, period. The longer you do that and the better you do that, you create that gap. That's how you accumulate wealth. And then people say you're rich. So everything is relative. If you're earning 50,000 shillings and you spend 20,000 shillings and you save 30,000 shillings, you're doing well. If someone earns 500,000 shillings but spends 485,000 shillings, he only saves 15,000 shillings, he's not doing well. Unfortunately, the way we are programmed as human beings, when you get a promotion, you want a better house, a better lifestyle, you start spending much more. So the more you go up the ladder, the more you spend. So you find so many people right up there, they're earning a lot of money, but they don't save anything, they don't invest anything, they have a good lifestyle, but the day you stop earning, they're back to zero. They drop like, like a stone from thrown up in the air. So it helps to learn how to save. Now, saving on its own is not good. Many people talk about saving, saving, saving. Saving is a means to an end. It's good to save so that you can invest. If you don't invest, there's no point in saving. Now, people will think, oh, I've saved so much money, my money's safely in the bank, and that's my saving, that's my retirement. I sympathize with them. If that money is not being invested wisely, the money will depreciate because of inflation, depreciate against foreign exchange. In real terms, the value of the money is dropping. And the longer you save, the worse off you will be because that money goes. But if you saved money and saving is a means to investing and you invest, then your money starts growing. And that is important. Now, financial literacy is understanding the whole equation, knowing where you start and where you end so that it is self-fulfilling. It's like a circle that is growing a virtuous circle. The more you save, the more you invest. The more you invest, the more you earn, the more you save. And then it keeps self-propelling. It just keeps growing like a snowball. Every time the ball goes a full circle, it gets bigger. It's picking up snow. I don't know if Ugandans will understand the concept of the snowball, but I think they do. So you need to do something that will help you. And the beginning, the first turn of the ball is really hard. It's like pushing a car or a train. To get it off, to start going, is really hard. But once it starts moving, it gains inertia. That inertia helps you. Now, the harder you push, the faster it will go, the easier it should become. And that's what it becomes. Until it's like you're pushing a car in water, and it's literally floating, and it becomes so light. It'll just keep cruising. So business is like that. Financial literacy is like that. The better you understand the language of money, the easier it is to make money. The easier it is to invest it wisely. You will make mistakes inevitably. You can read all the books, but when you go to practice, some things go wrong. And so you must be prepared to cut your losses. And with practice, the more you make decisions that are right, the better the decisions you make, the better you will become in business. So you find that because you make so many decisions and so quickly, it becomes like a reflex. You don't think when you blink. You don't think when you breathe. You just take it for granted. That's how business is, the language of business. So you've got to be making many decisions a lot of the time, and along the way, you get better at it. Then you make more good decisions, occasionally a few bad ones. Until today, I still make some bad decisions, and I reflect on them. But I don't want to miss the lesson when I've made a bad decision. Wrong move, too much risk, not worth the return. A lot of work, unfortunately, we're going to lose some money, or we're going to lose a lot of time. We could have done it elsewhere. It's okay, but learn to take the lesson. Don't miss the point. So... Making decisions is very important. Learning to invest is very important. Now, people always complain that they don't have capital. There are several sources of capital, and I've talked about this in different fora, and people think there are shortcuts to capital. There are really only two ways to get capital, to accumulate capital. You've got to earn it, or you can borrow. When you borrow from a bank, they want to see how did you get the money? Why should we lend you the money? You must have a track record of earning. So earning is a prerequisite to borrowing. You show that you can earn, then they can lend. You show that when you, you've earned this money, you can make this money grow, people will be more willing to lend you money. So lending is actually a function of your track record of how you bank, how you show that you've got money growing, that ability to grow the money. And when you grow money, people can lend you much more money. It's not taboo. It's not a bad thing to borrow because now in Uganda, people think, oh, that guy has loans. He's fake. Oh, that guy has loans. He's not rich. The bank will never lend you money unless they are sure, A, that you can repay them, because that's most important. B, you can repay them with interest so that they can make a profit. And you can make a profit. You're sustainable. You are growing. They see potential in you. 
You can have a fantastic business plan, but if you don't have the ability to deliver on your business plan, then you are a weak bet. They will not bet on you. But if you can show them time and again that you can build on what you're doing, you're good at what you're doing, you may have a few mistakes along the way. They will forgive you. There are flaws everywhere. But if largely you're making good decisions, solid investments, growing your portfolio, people want to back you. The banks will come to you. And it's cheap to use banks' money. If you can pay them more than they are paying their customers, they are paying for the deposit a certain amount in interest, they are charging you a lot more, and you can pay them because your business plan shows the spread that you're making, that's good for you. Then you can grow. So I encourage people only to borrow when you're sure you can earn money and you can pay back the bank their capital and interest. You may falter along the way. One or two months may be hard, but you've got to make sure that you can keep up their payments because that is not your money. People have got to understand what is capital. Once you've got capital, separate it from your day-to-day life, your expenditures. Don't be tempted to borrow from it because the borrowing habit is a terrible habit. And the best thing is to form good habits early when you've got a small amount of money so that if you have a bad habit, you lose a small amount of money. When you have developed your business and you have a bad habit like gambling or going on sprees, spending sprees, then those bad habits will hurt you more because they are bigger mistakes that you make. So you've got to be careful. Some people don't really make a mistake, just that the odds are stacked against you and, you're, and you've invested everything. Let's say you're buying coffee for export. You, the p- coffee price is good, and the coffee price, price plummets outside your control. And you've put everything on the line. Sometimes you, these things happen, and you find some people have lost nearly everything, their house, their family, because they had put so much on the line. So a good business person has to judge risk and reward. There's a high risk here. Is the reward worth it? At the beginning, you're hungry. You're putting everything on the line. You're risking maximum. When you're young and you don't have a family, you don't have obligations, you are probably not borrowed. But then as you become more responsible, you've got to understand, you've got to gauge the risk yourself. Now, I have a high penchant for risk. So I employ people around me called directors. They join the board. They help you. My wife has a low appetite for risk. Listen to her. Share these ideas. Find the right balance. That point of equilibrium where the risk is worth the reward. If you take too much risk and the reward is not worth it, not good. If you're getting a lot of reward for low risk, fantastic. That's good for you. So getting that right medium is where it is. It's a continuous game and it's continuously changing. So you are, there are so many moving parts in a business. People think, oh, it's only the four factors of production. Oh, no. So many moving parts, and you've got to harness them. Learn how to change gears with all these parts so that at the end of the day, you come out ahead of the curve. So the language of money cannot be taught in one session. It can only be taught in a lifetime, and you keep improving. I learned a lot from my Asian friends, largely because they didn't spend so much time in school. They started business quite early. So they were almost my contemporaries, my peers. Some of them were a bit older than me, but I could learn from their habits. And some of them had developed, had developed these habits because by, almost by way of culture. It's the way they do things. From primary school, the kids work in their dad's shop. At lunchtime, at dinner time, they talk business. They only seem to talk business in their house with the wife, with the children. So their brain is acclimatized, the language of money. They keep thinking in numerically. But if we don't, and we only go to school and think that we can behave, run a race with these guys, it's like trying to run a race against the guys who live in Mount Elgon, whether on this side or in Kenya side. Those guys will outrun you. They are right up there. Their lungs are like leather. They can run on very little oxygen. And you live here in Kampala, and you think you can outrun those guys? It's going to be really hard. So they have an, a genetic advantage because of where they live, generation after generation. Now, we, don't do, we, have no, we didn't do business. Business for Ugandans began in 1972, 1973, when the Asians were expelled. But we knew nothing. It was a very steep learning curve. And out of learning then, those who learned, some got in and made easy money. So they stopped learning. They took things for granted. If you're given a shop, a location, a shop by the president or the minister, and it's full of stock, all you have to do is sell the stock. You don't even think of where you're going to get the stock to replenish. That's a joke. Because after it's run out, then what? You've got to learn. And to succeed in business, you've got to do your research. Today, more than ever, because the world is becoming more competitive, the internet is here. And uh, uh, this is an era of knowledge. Everybody gets to know. You can't play a differential between a price, whether it is forex, buying and selling, or clothes, or goods, or commodities. 
people get to know the price, the ultimate price. So where is your comparative advantage? Where is your unique selling point? You've got to do research. If you're going to get into manufacturing, into agriculture, into services, any business you choose to do, you've got to do your research. You've got to do your homework. There's no shortcut to that. The more you do that, the better equipped you are to make informed decisions. I hope I've covered your question.